Canberra is interesting because it is one of the two islands in Malaysia which uh, oceanic bird use as a place for resting. Uh, one is Pulau Perak, the other is Pulau Sipadan. In Pulau Perak, there was hardly any trees. Early surveys in the 50s shows there was only one tree. The whole island is looks white because of the dropping of the oceanic bird. That's why the term Perak, Perak means silver. This dropping becomes uh, soil over, the, over uh, time and slowly new vegetation begins to uh, inhabit in the island. Initially in Pulau Perak, there were two major oceanic birds, the brown boobies and the brown nudies. Over time, when there were more vegetation, new birds start to come in. Now you have eagles uh, found in Pulau Perak. You also have a lot of terns and swift, swiftlets coming into that, that area. Now the, the, the birds are becoming more cosmopolitan. The, the population bird, the population of birds are much uh, wider now than before. Pulau Perak is an island way off Langkawi. It is seldom that people go there. The distance helps the island to remain as pristine as it can be. But at the same time, time goes on uh, as you know, people get to know about the island and what lies beneath. If there are no proper governance, uh, whatever remains there, most probably will be gone. People know Langkawi for its uh, beaches and, uh, and the coral at Pulau Paya. And this is uh, different altogether. The island has no beach whatsoever, so most of the diving must be done off the, the boat. Exploration covers the trip itself, the exploratory trip, and then the scientific finding and the involvement of some scientists during the, the project, and also brief but thorough survey of one side of the island. We will have to come to the conclusion later, whereby to describe this in a common language to the public so that everyone understands how important it is to preserve this island. Pulau is interesting in several aspects. Geographically, it is the most western island of Malaysia. It is right out in the uh, Straits of Malacca, just before it, uh, the Straits of Malacca opens up into the, uh, into the Andaman Sea. That's where you have the uh, influence of the Straits of Malacca, as well as the influence from the Andaman Sea. So, around Pulau Pera, water depth is approximately 80 meters. The sea floor rises up almost vertically, to form Pulau Pera, and the top of Pulau Pera itself is about 80 meters height. Initially, it's, it's a, really a wall with some pavement before it goes down into the deep sea. And to the north, Pulau Pera itself lies at, almost at the edge of the continental margin before it passes out into, into an uh, ocean basin called the Andaman Sea, where the depth goes to more than a thousand meters deep. It is an extension of the geology of Langkawi Island, especially the western part of Langkawi Island, where the Machinchang Formation is exposed. Pulau Perak itself is formed of that sandstone, but it has been metamorphosed. It has formed an, an anticline with very strong fracture pattern. Now, that creates a very rugged topography on Pulau Perak. What I find during the survey, I find that Tukumpera is very unique in a way because some of the coral formation in Tukumpera are different from other areas because of the, the topography is different. The species that we found used to be boulder corals. It forms a table, so that's uh, one of the examples of how unique it is. Normally people know about hard coral more than soft corals, but soft corals also contribute to reef builders, but not as much as hard corals. For this trip, actually I'm looking for a gorgonian. I can say the number of hard corals in every square meter is very rich. For soft coral, it's very low, considered zero per square meter, except for certain group of Generally in the south and in the north, the coral are healthy and there are evidence of coral that is recovering. We can see new coral 
are growing on the rocks. Whereas in the center of the bay, we see some degradation and from the water sample, we find that small amount of ammonium in the water resulting from the waste coming from the uh, fishing boat that was parked there. The coral in the middle of the bay where the boat is parked also seems to be affected by some disease. We also explore for different sites. We actually have four, four sites. One in the south, now we call the Manta Alley, the South Manta Alley. One in the middle we call the Lobster Wall. And then there's an, there's an Animony City in the uh, northwest side of it. On the north, there's another Manta Alley where we, we encounter oceanic manta about a few times. I saw pelagics like uh, manta. I dive five times. I've seen them in uh, three out of five dives. And my last dive was uh, very uh, eventful where I saw uh, at least uh, two of them at the beginning of the dive as well as at the end. Pelagics like manta is, is sought after by divers all over the world. And you know, for Malaysians, uh, normally, mantas, you can only see it uh, probably in uh, Sipadan or even Nailaya. The manta that was found around Pulau Perak, they call the oceanic manta. They, they are slightly different from the reef manta. They are encountered in uh, atolls and faraway locations, and they are not easy to be found. They do exist anywhere. Uh, it's not easy to see them as regular as to the uniqueness about oceanic manta is that they have the time that they approach the diver and they have the gracefulness that they, they uh, as compared to reef manta. I hope that we find some way to conserve Pulau Perak as well as the sea around it. Presently, it is far away from the, from the mainland. There is not much activity around there, but as boats get bigger and faster, we see more and more divers, fishers, anglers, coming close to Pulau Perak and uh, to fish around there. If we do not preserve Pulau Perak in some form, then we will lose a very uh, unique heritage of Malaysia. It is almost like uh, the little Galapagos of Malaysia. I can see this uh, Pulau Perak is more to a shelter area. To, to deep sea fishermen. I don't see any fishing activities at that area, but we can see the maybe the drifted net, some long line from the anglers. So if we want to preserve Pulau Perak, then we have to do something about these issues. Otherwise, the, uh, the, the riches of the environment in Tukum Perak will be affected in the long run by human activity. So I must say that the, the water around Pulau Pera is, is, is thriving for Manta to be around and I think there is a huge opportunity for the diving industry, the state, to conserve the island to make sure that whatever that is there now will remain there or, or, and even prosper uh, for the benefit of the local divers, even international divers who come, who wants to come and, and, and have a look at marine life uh, in and around uh, Kedah Langkawi.